Hello. How are we doing today? Hope we're all doing well. I am uh, all ready to go, actually. I just need to start the plane up and then we're good to go well. I need to start the plane up, put the flight plan in, uh, which I really should have written down. So I'm just going to write down our flight plans today, for today real quick. So I am writing down the flight plans as we speak. I've got them all pre-prepared. And it's just a case of writing them down. And then, uh... This... Two, eight... the routes written down. Why am I not playing farm sim? Because I'm playing flight sim. <laughs> Mondays and Fridays are Dave plays flight sim because Dave needs a break from farm sim. Thought you'd pop in and give me like, well thank you very much Jim Bob. Let's get this plane starting up. And I want to have these. Um, fuel is full, fantastic, and let's get, nope, map, flight plan, insert waypoint is gonna be, first route is Zulu Golf Direct. Insert waypoint. Possibly doing this backwards. Uh, G G O V. Nope, that's perfect. We can select all that. Uh, direct to waypoint. Okay. There we go. Over SFDN, he might be finishing soon for all I know. Um, and our cruising altitude is going to be well, that's heading actually, heading is going to change as well. Altitude is going to be 19,000. Do, 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 do. This is the boring bit where I'm just going up through numbers. Eight. Nine. Uh, autopilot can be turned on. That's not going to have an effect right now. I'm going to set that to sky view. 
gonna get the meter for GBYD. Oh. Two seven zero one zero Kevo K two seven nine one nine QNH one zero zero eight. Uh, which I now need to figure out how to change that to be correct. Uh, screen layout. Nope. Back PFD. Tools, um, nope, set up, barrel, mobile bar. <clears throat> there we go, and looking at 1008, so 1008, there we go. Uh, we're gonna squawk 2000, that's fine. I think we are ready to turn on the igniter and start the engine. Or not, because I forgot to choose a fuel source, but that should still start. In theory, we are starting. It's a hot start. Oh boy, that's a hot start. That's a really hot start. That is... Definitely not what I wanted Check. to see. Engine. Engine back Check. to idle. Engine. That's good to go. Let's get no. Oh, that going. Nav beacon taxi. Uh, weather and TCAS can come on. Windshield heat, pedo heat. Just turn them all on. Not gonna matter too much. Uh, and the, the wind 270. If I go to where are we currently? Uh, GBYD. Angel International, perfect. Hey, SG. We will be taking off runway 32. So. Without further ado, I need to just double check real quick. Yep, that flight plan did get registered by Vatsim. Just want to double check Zulu time is correct. It is. Let's get the invisible parking brake off and get taxiing. Uh, Nick and Cornish. I've been a bit busy getting this plane configured. He says that we forgot. I forgot to put on in the notch of flaps that's needed. This plane looks strange. It is an odd plane. It's extremely powerful. I'm currently taxiing on idle. <laughs> I have zero throttle in right now, and it's producing seven percent power. Ah, you found the Aerobasque Robin. This is also, believe it or not, Hodge by Aerobasque. So the only runway entrance will be over here. That costs. Yeah, this costs. Ain't good enough yet to buy anymore. You. Slowly but surely, you'll get used to, um... 
the planes and how they fly. You're flying Thomas Cook at the moment, SG, nice. Why don't I just turn on there? I don't need the ice light on, but I do need landing and strobe. At this point, let's get the... Uh, oh, the... yeah. Transponder's on. This will provide all the weather and stuff that I need. More the flight planning, etc. I do very little actual flight planning. I'll be honest. Most of what I end up doing is just going to Simbrief and getting flight plans from there. I'm currently, <laughs> I, I, the Simbrief doesn't have planning uh, uh, possibilities for. Whoops. Also, I've got the radios on. Simbrief doesn't allow you to plan for. Um, an Epic E1000, so I'm using flight plans that are generated for a TBM 900 today. It'll work, but it's a bit derpy. Let's turn around here, that's I think enough runway that we'll be able to take off for sure. Let's just put the runway heading in here, it is 321. Uh, heading of three two. Whoops. Heading of three two one, please. Three two one. Just so I can fly runway heading immediately. And let's get airborne. <laughs> 70 knots and we want to rotate positive rate kind of established gear up. gear up yeah you'll hear you'll hear weird voice lady talking to me a bit let's reduce power and 29 knots flaps up And a thousand feet indicated, let's start the turn. Hello, Yanis. Late? Yes. You don't know how I suddenly get the hang of it. Because I've spent a lot of time practicing. And with that, let's get the autopilot on and on nav. And IAS 150 knots. If you want to know how I've got so good at this, Hodge, it's because I have currently, um... No, Simulator Gaming? Oh. The 737 is pretty easy to deal with. There's the plane! Look at the plane go! Whee! So I planned for 19,000 feet, we're heading up there now. There's the coast of Africa there. That's not the coast of Africa, that's a river. You mean the day was late? I'm never late. I'm always perfectly on time. You were just early. Um, <laughs> Technically I've got no passengers. I can actually show the loading of the plane here. I've got myself and the invisible um, co-pilot. And that's it. No... One, 880 kilos of fuel. Um, that's all we really need. Seven knot crosswind, not a big deal. This flight is anticipated to be just under an hour. Um, it's actually saying here, 35 minutes at 150 knots indicated. We're going up to 19,000 feet. It'll be significantly less than that. Uh, coming up through 6,000, the taxi light is already off. Beacon strobe nav are all going to stay on. Um, everything there is good. 
just double checking systems. Gear is definitely up. Uh, gear is not indicated up, but I'm presuming it is. Um, it is because weird co-pilot lady said so. Uh, let's get the yacht amper on. Uh, flaps definitely up. Uh, get some heating going. Where's the lighting is armed? We are on Unicom 122.8. We are having a good flight. So, this is the Epic E1000. It's a turboprop. Am I climbing? I haven't turned anything on. Yes, I have. <laughs> if you're wondering why the nose on this is so huge, it's because it's got a, a turbine engine in here. It's got a little jet engine that's powering the, the propeller. And it kind of looks like we're stalling a small bit, but we're definitely not. Yeah, we definitely got a good angle of attack here. And Hodge, if you're wondering how I'm climbing, I've set it on IES mode, which is going to hold 150 knots. But it's going to allow me to climb with that 150 knots. I can turn down fuel usage just a small bit. And just feather the prop to get a bit more power out of it. A bit more torque for less actual spin. Climbing 2,100 feet per minute, we are going good. So confused watching this. How so? There you go, bro. Slightly looks like the flying fish. Yeah, Brian, if you've got questions, feel free to ask. Like, if you want to learn anything about what I'm doing here, please, please do ask. Lots of wow, yes. Because I, I ran through all of that very quickly, I know. Uh, oh, yeah, gears indicated up, flaps indicated up, good. Uh, come through 12,000, these landing lights should have run off a while back. Here we go. Yeah, you'll occasionally hear a weird co-pilot lady who's invisible saying fuel tank switched. Um, the tanks are being auto-switched by the plane, which is really nice. One thing less for me to worry about, because this doesn't have a central fuel tank, it's only got a left wing tank and a right wing tank. Um, and the systems within the plane here will swap them automatically for me, so I don't need to remember that. Let's get the uh, yoke up. I'm not going to need anything underneath there until we're coming into land. Until we've already landed, in fact. Estimated time remaining is 30 minutes. Epic E1000? Yes. Is this is a new plane I bought? Yes. Yeah. Um, I bought it literally two days ago. This is the second time I've brought it out for a flight. <laughs> I'm reasonably confident I know what I'm doing. By reasonably confident. It? It's, um. It doesn't like going slowly. Uh. Bit of a handful on landing. It loves low speed stalls, loves stalling the wings out. Um, once you get it up to speed, it's very good, but kind of across basically the entire speed range, um, it's very sensitive to input. Um, You gotta keep an eye on the engines to make sure you don't, or the engine to make sure you don't fail it. Because uh, the very first attempt I had at a flight, I failed the engine. Um, I blew it up. It, it just overheated and, and jammed. Um, but even then, I actually landed the plane afterwards. You know, it goes through the air fairly easily, but at low speeds, it's not happy. 
there's no parking brake as well, which is an interesting thing. I don't have any parking brake bound, so, um, once we get to, um, once we get to Guinea-Bissau, I will have to hold the brake and kill the engine. Because there's no parking brake in this. This is an autopilot or am I flying? It's an autopilot currently. It's flying GPS route, so I can up this up somehow. I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to pop up. So it's going to fly this route here. And uh, we'll take over once we get over to GGOV. Weird. It's a bit odd, yeah. Bit interesting to um, work with. So I'm gonna insert arrival. Um, open up Avatar real quick. And get the meter. Uh, two four zero at eight. Cav okay. One zero zero seven. No sig. Can't think of it. Uh, tools. Nope. Barrel. Oh, there's no way to set that to standard. That's interesting. <laughs> at least I'm not seeing a way to set the barrel to standard. Um. So I need to look up GGOV. GGOV. OV. Bissau Osvaldo Vieira International. That is correct. Um, no, that wasn't what I wanted at all. Airports. And approaches. Let's meet her again. Two four zero eight. So we'll be going. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Zulu for two one. So say is two one Zulu. Okay. Via the is it the Victor or the Delta? I'll be wanting here. Because uh, it's offering me Victor, which brings me round to the north of the airport. Delta will bring me round to the south, presumably. That's the Delta I want. And via Disney. Okay. That's just complicated the flight plan, but it's given me my full arrival. Um. Do a barrel roll. No. Another complication on this is... It is incredibly hard to figure out... That's how you swap from com to nav. Okay. Um, we're going 109.3. And in box 2... Uh, 114.3. Which, oddly, was pre-programmed, which is lovely. So I both these back to calm mode. Couldn't figure out when I was flying last night how to do that. Um, plan... Approaching waypoint. Jump. Oh! Okay, don't hit the jump button, because that magically teleports you. <laughs> so let's have a look at our arrival here. Uh, not this one, this one. So coming in from... Zigwinchor. And it looks like we want to be 2,000 by Disney. Uh, just confirmed 2,000 by Disney. 2,000 by Disney confirmed. So let's just bring it right down. Can I? Oh. 
That's much more convenient. And we'll start descending, I guess. Bring our uh, airspeed down. And just put a small bit of throttle in. There we go. I can come up max. Can this come up max too? Yes. Perfect. Technically zero torque, we're uh, um, flight idle. Dropping off the speed so that we can get down to 2,000 feet in time for the ILS. How's Dave today? Dave is good. How is Yanis today? Want to bleed up more speed in time, but bringing it down to 150 now is fine as well. So I am playing a triple hop. This is the second shortest leg of today's route. Uh, the shortest leg is actually going to be from uh, Conakry in Guinea itself. Uh, to Sierra Leone, but this is quite short as well. What game is this? This is X-Plane 11. Went down a bit too fast. Let's just put a small bit of throttle in. Just to mediate the climb. You can see that it is a bit... Even on descent here, it's not very happy to be going slowly. This is X-Plane 11. It's a flight simulator, and I am currently flying an Epic E-1000 turboprop plane that may or may not have the reverser on. Reverser shouldn't be on. Now there's no way the reverser's on if I'm only going down 600 feet per minute. Might just be the wind showing that. That's all my cut. I've unintentionally been holding this as the shill mug. I apologize. <laughs> Final arrival time is scheduled for 15 minutes from now. Can you travel to any country on this game? Yes, absolutely any of them, which is why I'm going to all of them. The only few that are quite difficult to get to, technically speaking, are the Vatican and the Vatican, Palestine, any of the weird Eastern European countries that may or may not exist, um, which I'm just skipping all of them for the purpose of this. Uh, I'm also skipping Palestine because there's no airport there. Uh, the Vatican has no airport for obvious reasons. Palestine has no airport. A lot of the weird Eastern European countries that may or may not exist around the borders of Russia have no airports. Um, San Marino has no airport, but there is one nearby, and we're hitting that. Monte Carlo, Monaco has no airport, but there's one nearby, so we're going to hit that. Uh, any other countries that are a bit weird to get to? Greenland isn't technically a country. Um, but it's quite difficult to get to. Same with Antarctica. Um, there was an initial plan to hit Antarctica during this tour, but it's so far out of the way that I'm kind of considering dropping those two le those. Uh, it would actually be like six legs to get to Antarctica. Greenland is Danish. Yes, Greenland is part of Denmark. Uh, San Marino is a part of Italy, but it's independent, technically speaking. Uh, Monte Carlo is a part of France, but it is again a principality. Uh, the Vatican is part of Rome, but is an independent nation. Um, Western Sahara, where we, were, where we were last week, is part of Morocco, but technically independent. It's a bit complicated. Hope you see me again soon. See you, Brian. There's a few countries that I'll be hitting on this that don't technically exist, depending on who you ask. Um, so, you know, I'm not going for... <laughs> 100% of all countries, it's as many as I can hit 
with, with some semblance of, um, like, using airports. <laughs> but I will, I will have a leg that is going to be regarded as the Vatican. Um, it's also going to result in a meme leg within Rome so that I can hit Italy as well. Uh, the first meme leg of the tour is coming up soon, and I am yet to decide on a plane for it. Um, our first meme leg is going to be after Sierra Leone. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, twelve legs from the end of today's stream is going to be the first meme leg. Um, and that is between uh, the Congos, between the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, between Brazzaville and Kinshasa, we literally just have to fly over a river. And that I'm going to do under visual flight rules. So pretty much every leg so far has been under instrument flight rules where I filed fly, fly a flight plan and said, yeah, I'm going from here to here via these places. The meme legs are going to be IF or VFR because there is literally no point in doing them any other way. I'm not coming down fast enough, I don't think, so let's just pull out a bit more throttle. Let the plane dump itself a bit. And trailer speed's still 186 knots. I'm thinking one of them is going to be done in a Piper Cup. One, one of the meme legs has to be done on a Piper Cob. It is one of the iconic planes of the world. Um, so I will be doing a Piper Cob meme leg. Uh, one I'm thinking of getting that Russian, that, that Soviet um, crop duster that is a jet for some reason. Or was a jet. I think I'll do one of the meme legs in that. And I think there's another meme leg that I need to plan. There is one meme leg that I will 100% be doing in a 747 because it is planned to be the 747 meme leg and the reason I want to do that is because it is flying into uh, Princess Juliana Airport which if you don't know is the one where the 747s come over the beach um, I'll be doing that in a 747 it's gonna be a very very short leg probably about 15 minutes um, setting up the plane is going to take longer than flying it, I'm going to be very honest, and it's not going to be for a long time. Thank you, lady. Um, <laughs> I need arm log one, by the way. Log two should be alive, and we should be getting readings from log two. Uh, yes, Bissau, log, uh, Bissau thing is alive. I can actually arm up... Uh, now one there. Now two, there we go. 24 miles from Bissau. 24 miles out from the airport. So yeah, we do need to be a lot lower than 11,000 feet. Coming through 10,000, we need to have landing lights on. Taxi light can come on once we get the gear down. Um, we're not gonna need the icing as such, so I can actually turn off the uh, boots and prop heat. Wind chief can stay on. Inertial set can stay on. I have no idea what that is. Pito heat can stay on as well. 787... Uh, plane spotting TXL Jacob 787 TXL Tegel? Interesting. 737 NGX or A320 family. Um, I usually end up flying a 737, but I do prefer Airbus. Um, I don't have any... I, I haven't bought the A320 from... Uh, the A320 Ultimate yet. Uh, so, in terms of flying for myself, it will be, for now, 737NGX. Uh, Zebo to be specific. Uh, I might occasionally use the 700 ultimate, uh, but Zebo is, is my baby. Um, A320 I do like. I, I love the amount of automation the, the 320 has. It's a lot easier to fly. Um, the FMS is a bit of a pain to learn in the Airbuses, but it is just so much easier to fly. So much nicer. Especially the flap system with only four, four steps of flaps. 
Um, just makes a lot more sense than Boeing in their 73,000. Especially, it, it's more modern, basically, like... Um, I do like Boeings, but Airbus, I think, have the better forward-thinking with the, the, the 320 family. Also, the better, just the better range in terms of the 320 family. I mean, you, you haven't heard of an Airbus crashing because their MCAS system failed, have you? Sixteen point two miles out from the airport. How many of the time to stop over to local one? Demo Boeing, I'm making a big mistake with seven three seven or something, but the engine being too far forward. The complication with the 737 is the engines are very far forward because the wings are so low. The gears is very short in a 737 because it was originally designed for much, much smaller engines, uh, much lower bypass engines. And with more modern engines being very high bypass and therefore huge, most of the air that goes through a jet engine in a 737, A320, 747, A380, any plane that you'll see today for the most part unless you live in Northern Canada, in which case you'll probably see a lot of 737-200s. Um, they're very high bypass, so they're huge engines. And the 737 wasn't designed to have them. So they've had to... Boeing made the decision, instead of lengthening the gear and all that stuff, to just mount the engines forwards and up a bit. And you'll notice with the, the 737, the, the bottom of the engine is flat, and that's just so that it doesn't catch on the ground ever. Um, to avoid, like in a heavy landing, it, it catching the ground. Um, but the problem they have, Brian, is the MCAS system. The um, I don't know what MCAS stands for, but it's an anti-stall system. And the crux of the issue isn't the engines being too far forward. It's the stall detectors giving erroneous readings as a result of the engines being so far forward. For some reason, Boeing didn't think of that. Um, so they have to recalibrate their MCAS to account for... I don't know, by the way, why the ground is so green here. It should be, like, mainly forests and stuff. Um, yeah, the Boeing didn't realize that their engines on the 737 were abnormally far forward con con um, compared to basically every other plane in the range. Um... They've got nothing else that has the engines so far forward. And it somehow didn't occur to them that the 737 would be an exception. Uh, and that's what the problem with the MCAS is. To, like, at a very basic level. Coming down, 1400 feet per minute, we are... Good to slow descent now. Gonna reach 2000 by... Disney. Actually, gonna reach 2000 before Disney, so let's just extend that out. Looking at the little banana here. I'm trying to get that just before Disney. Or just at Disney would be perfect. I don't know why we're getting UK style scenery for the middle of Africa, but okay, I explain you, do you? Uh, come down too fast now. Approaching altitude. Yes, I know we're approaching 2000, that is perfect. Uh, I'm gonna just check the meter again. Uh, meet. Meet her. So I have the caps lock on, meet her. GGOV. Nope. Meter GGOV. 
Cav OK, 3421, 1007. 1007. It's gonna visually jump us downwards, that's fine. Power can go back in now. Hello, Hayden! Let's keep it about 150 knots. Kick approach mode in. And we want localizer one. Which hopefully is gonna work. I haven't tried this with the localizer yet. Glide slope is in. It looks like we are going on localizer, which is good. Yeah, we're intercepting localizer. Well, I thought they were invincible and took a fat L because of it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think it was more they didn't realize that the system would have as many problems as it does. And as a result, there's been a major issue with it. I got the one with Skyview, yes. I thought this would be fancier and therefore more interesting. Localizer is intercepting. I, I know I could have gone just as easily for the G1000 version, but Skyview. It's different and therefore interesting. Is it? Um, yeah, actually. I quite like Skyview. It, it, the GPS is a lot more readable than even a G1000, so I'm, I'm quite glad I've gone for it. Um, still kind of getting used to the touchscreen nature of it, but other than that, yeah. Quite happy with it. Seven point six miles out from the airport now. We are intercepted with localizer, fully established. Gear will be coming down relatively soon. Kips five hundred has the same system. Ooh, tempting. Localizer fully intercepted now. We are alive. Glide slope's coming in. I'm gonna pull out a bit of throttle here just to allow that to come in. And we'll get the gear down in a second. Gonna warn you guys in advance, once I swap to reverse thrust, this thing is going to get very loud very quickly. I didn't realize it would do it when I um, did this in my test flights, but the... Um, yeah, the reverse thrust on this is a bit loud. So, you're gonna have to bear with some very loud noises for a few seconds while I'm on uh, reverser's idle. This thing is designed for short, short runways, I should add. I could actually, thinking about it, bring it in flaps, uh, flap zero, essentially, and just land flapless, but... We'll go, um... Can we go flaps one or flaps two? I think we'll go flaps two. So let's get the gear down now. Gear down. And taxi light can come on. Gear down three green. Flaps gone full. Bit more throttle to to allow for the extra drag we have. Small but less than that, please. There we go. Should get the one thousand call out in a moment. One thousand. There we go. Gonna bring it down to five hundred on autopilot and then kick it out. Thrust set for landing. Go around altitude is 3,000 feet. Heading needs to be set to 208. And our go around plans are just fly straight ahead.
Ashman takeoff rate is 4,000 feet per minute. Good lord. Yeah, it, ju it just launches off the runway. It's hilarious. 500 feet. Thank you, lady, for shouting at me again. Whoa. Okay. This is a very sensitive plane. This is something that I've learned from it. Just made two and a half mil on the FS-19 server. Very nice. Not a terrible landing reverser. Here comes the noise. God, that sounds terrible. Just gonna keep a small bit of thrust in because we need to get to the taxiway here. It's a long taxi down to the taxiway. Hey, Arsh. I do apologize for the roar this thing makes with the uh, thrust reverser on, but there's there's no way seeming to get around it. Um, one other oddity of this plane, there's no parking brake, so I'm going to have to kill the engine uh, as soon as we're parked up here. Hey, Mark! So I'm going to bring this to a full stop on uh, Apron Alpha, I think, we'll stop up on. So this apron here with the... Yeah, with the terminal-looking building. There is a parking brake. There isn't! Aiden, there is no parking brake in this. I've actually done the research. There's no parking brake either simulated or in real life. Um, there is if you bind up the button. If you bind up a button to parking brake, but there is no physical one in the cockpit. Sounds like a V8 on engine brake, yeah. It's not a very happy plane when you... Uh, Fuel tank switched. Yes, thank you, lady. Not a very happy plane when, you, when you've got it on uh, full reverse. Let's get the flaps up. Aiden, are you going to be joining us today? Let's just spin this around here. And let's put on the brake. Kill the engine. Let's condition the prop out. Condition the Prop. Right. That is flight one. I'm going to have to go to the BRB screen real quick while I re-log into Vatsim. Just change my call sign. And uh, we'll get going on flight two. Rainbow two eight. Connect. Not likely, seeing as you went to bed at 4.30, you have a final today. Fair enough. So we're logged back in now. I just need to put in this flight plan. And I'll have to put it into the uh, GPS as well. So, x box, send flight plan. I uh, forgot to take down the alternate for this one. I wasted my time. So this one is departing golf golf. Oscar. Hey. GG. O. V. Flying to G U C Y. Alternate of G G O V. G G O V. And our flight plan is. Drake Pilso. 
I also want Delta. Cruising altitude is going to be... Yes, this is a longer flight. Uh, so I'll just change that to a 2. And true airspeed up there is going to be... Uh, we'll say 244. 244. Uh, da -da -da -da. Estimated flight time is going to be... Uh, 1 hour, 19 minutes. And we've got tons of fuel, so let's send that flight plan. And now we need to get it up on this flight plan. Uh, delete flight plan, okay. Insert waypoint, and we're flying to... Uh, Pilso. P-I-L-S-O. And then from Pilso, we're flying to G U C Y. Messia. And direct to Pilso. There we go. Close flight plan. Can I zoom out even more, please? Or is this the maximum range you'll give me? That's the maximum range you'll give me. That's fine. Watch Game of Thrones. I watched Game of Thrones um, before we started today. Let's get the engine back running again. Okay. Have I got to hold down the start button? Helps I'll give it some fuel. That's probably what the entire problem is. This thing does not want a cold start, good lord. Well, pressure's low because the engine's not turning. Check engine. There we go. Looking forward to it later. Check engine. It's gonna shout check engine at me for a little bit. There we go. Um, everything is set up and we're already on the move. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Set up sky view. Oh, I've got runway heading set. We're gonna be using the same runway. You've never seen a single episode of Game of Thrones. The first four and a half seasons are really good. This latest season is... Uh, painful. Not in a good way. If you want to watch good Game of Thrones, watch the first four and a half seasons. If you want to watch bad Game of Thrones, watch the latest... What, three and a half? <laughs> Especially the latest episode, because people were just doing things... ...with, like, zero foreshadowing. Anything that was foreshadowed was just completely ignored. All of George R. R. Martin's hard work. It was just like, yeah, these people are just doing things now. There's maybe one thing that was actually foreshadowed. Wow, we used a lot of the runway. Let's get our altitude set and I'll use this button now. Uh, 29,000 feet is our cruise for this flight. Yep, 
It's funny. I'm. I'm. Oh, I've just realised that. Complete that flight. Let's just do some quick change rules here. We're going to GUCY. There we go. Fly now. There we go. I've updated the overlay. Don't worry. Kind of, sort of forgot the overlay needed an update. Um, yeah, we got more than enough room here, so let's slow down. Give it a bit of spin around. Get the landing lights on. Get the strobe lights on. Keep the taxi lights on. Engine full power. And we are good. We're on a roll. Airspeed's alive. 80 knots rotate. And we're coming. <laughs> this thing is ludicrous. <laughs> Slightly up front we're heading, let's just fix that real quick. Apart from playing how much is base game, it's about sixty dollars. Uh generally speaking, sixty sixty five dollars. Forgot to bring up the gear. Uh nav, autopilot on IAS one fifty knots. Let's go. Flaps can come up now. Zero flaps gear up. We are good to go. Get that airspeed up to 150 knots. And let's get a 3,000 foot per minute climb on. We're at absolute maximum thrust. Not happy with that. That's okay. Let's pull that back a bit. Let's tune this plane to get some good climb on. There we go. Uh, all the nerve graphs, etc. Are they all built in? No. Um, so what you're seeing here today, the VATSIM is free. Uh, this plane is about $30, $30, I think, $30, $35. The game itself, X-Plane, is about $60. Uh, Navigraph, which is, well, this tablet that I'm using, is free. However, to get the airports to work, you do need a Navigraph subscription, which is about $5 per month. Um, however, if you really want to, you can just use the maps section here, and you'll be fine. If you only ever want to fly around, like, America, um, you're actually perfectly fine never getting a Navigraph subscription. So we're flying from Bissau here to Conakry here, at this point in time. Um, the airport in Conakry, if it wants to zoom in far enough, the airport in Conakry is out in a little island kind of place. A little spit. It's a really nice looking airport. Uh, coming up through 6,000, we can swap over to standard, 1013. Come one is still set to 122.8, that is perfect. Coming up through... <laughs> Climbing at 2,500 feet per minute. We're doing good. Uh, let's just manage our engine temp. Don't want that going too high. There we go. Probably bring the prop back a bit more. There we go. There's some more. There's some more thrust. Can pull back the fuel usage and pull back the prop to basically full power here. And we're climbing at a wonderful 2,000 feet per minute. In fact, I've overdone the prop a bit. There we go. Probably squeeze a bit more power out. Believe it or not, I've not actually gone full throttle yet, today. There is no need in this plane. It just flies. It just flies wonderfully every single time. And we can go off through 10,000 feet. 
And we are en route now to Anakri in Bissau, in Guinea even. Uh, we're in Guinea-Bissau. Change our heading to 141. I'm liking this plane <laughs> a lot. Got a bit of a 12 knot crosswind element here, um, which gives us about 5 knots headwind, which is too bad. Not ideal. Do I do YouTube full time or do I have another job? I do for YouTube full time at the moment. Um, the only way that I'm allowed, I well, allowed, able to buy these nice things for myself, um, like planes and stuff, is through the generosity of the viewers. Generosity of you guys. Through PayPal and uh, Super Chats and whatnot. So I am very thankful. You know, you guys are what make the channel what it is. Wouldn't be here without you. I am, however, looking for a real job. Um, that's commitment. I know I'm looking for a, a day job that can actually pay some money because I'll be very blunt there's a minimum payout for YouTube and I wouldn't get it monthly if uh, you guys weren't as generous as you were or as you are um, so I am on I'm on the lookout for a bog standard day job fuel tank switched thank you weird lady not sure about gaming skills I'm decent at flight sims I'm not bad at flight sims <laughs> Um, what's our air temperature at? I forgot to reset flight times. So it's gonna read 133 for a while. Is there any air indicator? Temperature indicator at all? Outside air temperature is minus 7. Do have a bit of cloud up ahead that is of minor concern. Let's bring our A. Our, our airspeed up to 200 knots. I'm mildly concerned about a stall, believe it or not, at 150 knots at the moment, so let's just bring our speed up to 200. I'll probably get a bit more power out of the engine by faffing about with the prop pitch and a bit less fuel in. Can I get away with any less fuel? No. I'm just going to pull back the power a bit here because I don't like the engine temperature getting too, too high. Haha! Uh -huh. There was a period there where I thought it hit like 1300 RPM. Yeah, there we go. Back on a climb up to 29,000 feet. It is there that we will calm the hell down and uh, 
get our crews on. Our TCAS is on. There's invisible planes dotted around, but they. I don't think they exist. Uh, I just need to open up Vatspy to figure out if they do. I am probably the only plane in this part of Africa today. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am most definitely the only plane in this part of Africa. There's a an OAL plane, Olympic Air, I think, or Olympus, flying to Cape Town. He's currently over Kinshasa. A few planes flying out to HUEN, which I'm not entirely sure where that is. Somebody planning a departure from Abidjan. But nothing much else going on. Not a whole lot happening around Africa today, unfortunately. I'm the only plane with about 400 miles. Actually, slightly more. I'm the only plane within about a thousand nautical miles of my own position. Um, so, it's unlikely we'll see any takeoffs or landings, which kind of sucks, but such is life when you're flying into countries that, honestly, very few people on VATSIM want to. Is this multiplayer? Yes. Um, in an ideal world where every slot on VATSIM had somebody in it right now, uh, I would be getting vectored by air traffic control. I would have had to uh, request clearance and get cleared to fly the route that I want, and then request taxi, take off, get take off clearance, get cleared probably on a vector immediately, and then to my waypoint. Um, but as it is, there's no air traffic control online. But uh, as, as we go back into Europe, the odds of air traffic control being online increases. And um, the odds of me making hilarious mistakes with air traffic control increases as well. As does, oddly enough, the chance of the stream not being PG anymore, because I will have lost control over what's coming across the uh, on the stream itself. But there is carnage a reason that I'm tuned into 122.8 in my COM1, that is Unicom for 90% of the world on VATSIM. Uh, you will see me swap onto 12345 in Brazil, onto Fingers. Um, and the reason behind that is basically uh, Brazilian Unicom is weird. The Brazilian ARTCC is a bit odd and. Um, they use 122.8 for a lot of air traffic control. Um, so, Unicom, Advisory, Universal, Comms, whatever you want to call it, is um, 12345 uh, in Brazil, as opposed to 1228. Welcome back, Nick. Just FYI, Nick, I had a look at my Discord. Uh, the Firefly Funhouse room is for wrestling stuff. <laughs> I know that it might look like it's a farm sim room, but it is for wrestling. Uh, oh god, Sim sent a picture in, in Facebook. What on earth has he done now? Uh, what? Hayden, yes. Babidash. I'm looking forward to Babidash. A apparently, Sims in London. He literally said last night that he wasn't going to go to Raw tonight, which is in London, and he's just sent a picture on Facebook of the Raw set. 
so apparently he's decided against his own advice. Uh, okay. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Um, who's bringing that out again, Hayden? There's a dash, uh, Bombardier dash 8, 100, 200, 300 pack coming out, uh, from somebody who, I've forgotten their name. And, uh, the 400 is coming back, a new 400 is coming out soon as well. Looking forward to those, I love me turbo props. Absolutely love turbo props. By far my favourite type of plane because they've got this lovely hum. It's because this plane's so small and so close to the engine, you can't actually hear the hum. Come through 22,000 feet, 200 knots. <laughs> Estimated time remaining to the final is 27 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna put in our. Get the meter for our airport, which is what? Do you see why? Meter! G U C Y. Uh, two eight zero one zero Kevo K three two two one Q one zero zero seven no sig. It's gonna take that down actually. Uh, pen. I've got like a million pens surrounding me, but I can't find one when I want it. Uh, it's what? Take down the red. Uh, two eight zero one zero. Uh. Three, two, one, Q, one, zero, zero, seven. Alright. So, airports. Do you see why? Can I Arrival. I'm going to be arriving on to runway two, four. Um, presuming it's going to be one of these. Oh my god, so many arrivals. Okay. Um, and in terms of approach, do we have an ILS for 2-4? No, we have RNAV 2-4. That's fine as well. Need to go. Let's see, Nick. Uh, so let's go flight plan. Uh, insert arrival, RNAV to 4, via the, I'm guessing the Pelso 1 Delta. <laughs> arrival, one Delta, yeah, the Pelso 1 Delta. Okay, that's via Deckel. Yeah, Pelso, Deckel, Como, etc. So that'll bring us. That's not the one I want. Yeah. At or above 4,200 feet at Deckel. So I can aim at 4,200, so let's just put this in. I even get to get up to cruising altitude. Just that two three nine here, real quick to hold. And now we'll bring it all the way down to forty two hundred. Uh, forty four three two. Fantastic. QNH is 1007, which we'll set later on. We're gonna cruise at 239, or 2. 
Yeah, we'll call that 2400. Because Pilsa's coming up in... 86 nautical miles. We've still got quite a while to go. Yeah, we'll keep that good. Just pull that back a bit and try and get... A bit more speed out of this if I can. Yeah, cruising 200 knots is fine. Ground speed 296 knots. Yeah, that's definitely fine. Especially in a 14 knot crosswind. Um, so we will just be cruising for the next... What looks to be about 6 minutes? 16 minutes. And we'll start our descent at Pilso to Deckel. Or deck all. Um, let me check if there is some sort of thing I can put into nav here. Yes, we got VR, Gibesia. Uh, nav one one four nine. Four nine can go in there. Let's see a uh, localizer. Hundred and two nautical miles out from the airport. Perfect. Let's see. We need to knock. Tw we'll say twenty thousand feet off. So sixty miles. Sixty miles from the airport. We need to start our descent. Um, actually, it's going to be sixty miles out. From Pelso. Or from Deco. So. 40 miles out from from Pelso, we'll be starting descent. Fuel tank switched. Thank you, weird lady. Yeah, 40, 40 miles out from Pelso, we'll make our descent down to 4200. We'll hit 4200 a few miles. We'll say 30 miles out from Pelso. Uh, which will give us 4200 or above, or the above, at Deco. Kono has a requirement of. I wish this thing had Avitabs integration. Kono has a requirement of. 2400. The mandatory notes. Uh, Charlie Yankee 503 is 1700. So, yeah, we'll try and be at 2400 by Kono. Might mean we need to increase rate of descent after Deco. We'll call transition level, flight level 60. Uh, altitude set is fine. Oh, altitude set is hectopascals. Run elevations to hectopascals, transition level will be 60. We've got no ATC online, so we'll call it 60 to match transition altitude. Um, which will actually be a mismatch, but that'll be fine. And airport elevation is 71 foot, runway elevation is 54 feet. We don't need to worry about approach or tower or ground frequencies today. Uh, we have no air traffic control online, and will not have any air traffic control online. If we did, we would need to worry about those, but there's no air traffic control online. We don't need to worry about frequencies at all. Um, we won't need to worry about notifying other planes, either. Uh, so I would consider us good to begin descent at... Uh, for 35 miles from Pelso. Currently it's 64.2 miles out. You can see the cabin being reflected, which is kind of nice, in the uh, instruments there. Because the sun is shining into our cockpit. So we'll call it 35 miles from Pelso. We will descend to 4,200. 
At Decor, we will initiate a second ascent down to 2,400. Uh, for Conal, we need to be at 2,400 by Conal. We will then enable approach mode on our, on our autopilot, which will give us an auto descent in, in theory uh, via our nav. To 1700 by Charlie Yankee 503, and then on the ground at uh, Gabesia, runway 24. Runway heading at Gabesia is going to be something that I'll need to know uh, 238 degrees, three foot, 300 kilometer, 300 meter runway, that's fine. We can hope to be off by the high speed there, and uh, we should be stopped by the high speed. Might involve a bit more braking than I have done so far, but that's fine. Uh, so all we need to do now is watch our distance to go. So those of you that are here and watching, the 11 of you here watching, did you all have a very nice weekend? Let me know. Did you get up to anything interesting over the weekend? Did you go anywhere nice? Did you enjoy the um, lovely sunshine that's been around, at least Ireland? Um, probably the UK as well. Lovely and sunny. And uh, I'm looking out the window right now, not a cloud in the sky. Well, is that a cloud or is that just the horizon? I think it might be the horizon. Today is on the horizon. It look like looks like a cloud, but might not be. You had a nice weekend, David. Very good to hear. Did you go up to anything nice? Did you do anything cool? I've just been um, sat streaming as always. Uh, don't think I've got many plans upcoming that are going to move me away from streaming. Fifty-one point six nautical miles out. We're descending at thirty-five miles out. To Deckel and then down again to Cornell, which will give us a five minute descent. Well, that's going to be. <sighs> oh no, it's. Yeah. You're drawing grass all weekend. I'm sure that was a good weekend for you, Jack. That sounds like a very boring weekend to me, though. I was slightly concerned, by the way, that we wouldn't enough, have enough fuel for this leg, or these sets of legs, and we've used basically none. Um, I was actually anticipating needing to do a refuel in Kanakri, uh, because I worked it out that we'd need 1,200 kilos of fuel, uh, and it occurred to me just now that the 1,200 kilos was allowing for two legs that would return to our point of origin, um, including this, this leg here. So we definitely have more than enough fuel for the remainder of today's flights. Uh, we have one to go after this, where we're flying to... I've just realised I wrote on the next page as well. Wonderful! Uh, we'll be flying to Sierra Leone. We'll be landing here in uh, probably the next 20 minutes or so. In Conakry. And uh, Sierra Leone, we are going to be landing in Freetown, or well, just outside Freetown. There is no actual airport in Freetown. I'm just going to update the map real quick. Exclamation mark route if you are in any way interested in that. And we'll mark that as done as well, even though we're on that leg, and mark that as being the orange point. There we go. If you're interested in the route that I'm taking around the world, exclamation mark route, I have the full trip planned. One of the longest legs has not... well, the two longest legs have yet to be done. They are going to be... oh, I've currently got a plan to go to Antarctica. That is an option. Uh, the two longest legs are actually going to be going to and from Hawaii, because there is no easy way to do that. Um, and they're both going to be probably back to back challenger 300 legs um, just because there's no other I've got very few planes that can actually do it I might do one in uh, 737 um, 
but there's very few planes I have that can actually make it the 3,000 kilometers. There's a 4,000 kilometers that is the Hawaii legs. Uh, 4,100 kilometers and yeah, 4,000 kilometers each way. For reference, the longest leg so far has been uh, 2,318 kilometers. Or has it been this one? 2,318. Yeah, the longest leg so far has been 2,318 kilometers. We've got one that's double that planned. Um, and we do have a stop off in Antarctica planned also. But for now, we're in Africa. We're still really only getting this tour underway. After, uh, I mean, this, the 13th stream. How far are we? Oh, good lord. Nobody shouted at me to start to send. Um, so, indicated airspeed, 200 knots. Let's get this plane gone down. How many streams will this tour take me? I'm anticipating a few hundred. I'm anticipating this to be... Um... Like a project that takes... Over a year. Possibly over two years. Um... And what I'm currently doing is trying to figure out where the throttle needs to be to get me down. I'm also going to go down to an IS. Uh, can we have the Queen of the Sky 747 flight from Heathrow to the USA? 747 is planned on this tour, DMF. Uh, the 747 leg is in the Caribbean. And that's not it. That's not it. That's... This might be it. Nope. Nope. Where is the 747 leg? There it is. It's from St. Kitts and Nevis on a very short runway to Anguilla, Anguilla uh, to Princess Juliana International Airport because uh, I kind of have to do the uh, the overdone flying a 747 into Princess Juliana International. When do I tour Ireland? I've already done the Irish legs, Brian. Um, the next time I hit Ireland on this tour will be the end of it. Um, the tour started from Dublin Airport uh, a while back, and the we started off doing a bit of Western Europe. We've already hit... Uh, let me just look at the map here real quick. We've already hit Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland... Wales, England, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Andorra, Spain, Portugal, Morocco, Gibraltar, Algeria, Tunisia, Malta, Libya, Chad, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, the Western Sahara, Mauritania, Senegal, Cape Verde, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau today, we're heading into Guinea now. And our final flight of the day is going to take us to Sierra Leone. Um, and then on Friday we'll be flying from Sierra Leone to Liberia. And then ending up uh, at Abidjan in the Ivory Coast. I think we'll do just the two legs on Friday. Next Monday we'll probably fly Abidjan to Accra to Lome to uh, near Porto Novo, Novo in Benin. So I'm planning ahead in terms of like what flights I want to do on any given day. That's basically just which ones look like they're close together. Landing Hill will be starting up in a few minutes by the way guys if you're interested in watching some farm sim today. Which I am obviously not doing but uh... I get a bit more descent going here. I want to also change the... 
airspeed 150. This is gonna stall out the descent for now, but that's fine. I could throw the reverser on, but I'm not going to. Do I get this down at a reasonable pace? A bit faster than I'd like. Let's just put a bit of throttle in. So I start seeing some torque readings. There we go, one and a half percent torque. Is slowing the descent too much? Let's try 0.6. If you have a flight simulator and you're on VATS and you want to join into one of these legs, feel free. Um, I can give you the actual flight plan I'll be using, including altitudes and arrivals and whatnot. And as long as you got a plane that can keep up the same speed as me, you can fly along. So on this kind, on these kind of legs, if you have X-plane, the uh, Beechcraft C90 would be a very good plane to use. Ident? You want me to squawk... Why do you want... Do you want me to squawk Ident, Hayden? Or... Like, tell you what my... Airfeed Ident is... Thank you. Golf Uniform Charlie Yankee. We're heading into now. Uh, arrival for the next leg is Golf Fox Lima Lima. You're not bringing out the plane that I think you're about to bring out, are you, Hayden? <laughs> Sim, we're going to Gucci. <laughs> Last I heard, he was uh, flying a 737 with no idea how to turn on auto brakes. Uh, which surely makes for some interesting landings. He's figured out reversers and um, ground spoilers, but he hasn't seen to he doesn't seem to have figured out auto brakes yet. Um, which I would have thought would be a lot more simple than figuring out the, uh, or how to pr He hasn't figured out pressurization. Oh, good lord, those poor passengers. Also, Dash 8. Are you seriously bringing out a Dash 8? Can you get that to cruise slow enough? <laughs> Is the secondary question. Approaching waypoint. Approaching waypoint. Thank you, creepy lady who says things at me. Coming up at 6.57 p.m. local time, which you might notice is the exact same as Irish time. Auto break is tree and fence at the end of the way. That works too. Oh, don't tempt him, DMF. He was... I was flying into um, London Stansted last night in a Ryanair 737. And just, just as I touched down, I saw an airplane striker one just go straight up into the air. I had to go onto Vatspy to find out it was Hayden, which I should have presumed by a, a plane doing a VTOL at Stansted as I'm landing. Um, was I think? Yes, that was my fear. Dash eight makes a lot more sense because it can actually cruise that slowly. Uh, we can go a bit longer in this descent.
could have left this ascent a lot, lot longer than I did now in hindsight, but uh, we'll get it on the ground, that's all that matters. With air to air refueling, you which anyway, that, yeah, that's true. See, the range isn't the issue because the next leg is only about 200 nautical miles, 2 300 nautical miles. Um, the issue is going to be speed because this thing cruises and tops out at 200. I'm <laughs> really, really fast. Yes, because you'd be using a, a fighter jet. For those of you that haven't figured this out yet, Hayden is a bit mental. Says the guy who's bringing small aircraft around the world. Um, <laughs> says the guy who's, who's used the 737 at least once on this tour so far. Um, Mach 2... Brian, this thing is currently at Mach 0.28. Aiden's plan is to go ten times faster than this. <coughs> that's what Aiden's plan. That's what Aiden's plane could do. Plan. Oh, there's some mountains. Look at the mountains. Oh, delicious mountains. Look at each individual pixel. Aiden will be in Concord soon. Um, I, there is a Concord just after coming out, DMF, for X-Plane 11, um, from Kalamata. And I've seen a real-world commercial pilot try and fly it. Uh, yeah, that thing's unflyable. I mean, he did get some of the speeds wrong. He was trying to climb at 150 knots in the Concord when it... It uh, it ended very badly. I mean, he landed. He greased the landing, but he did have to turn back after getting to fifty-five thousand and stalling it. He got to fifty-five thousand feet at like Mach one, and had to bring it back down uh, because he was stalling, and he had no choice. Although the air traffic controller. Isn't Mach 1? Yes, the speed of sound is Mach 1. Uh, commercial jets tend to cruise at Mach... Anywhere between Mach 0.73 and Mach 0.82. Uh, it would be the... F like, 0.82 is the absolute speedy boys. Mostly around 0 0.75, 0 0.78. 0 0.8 if you want to go somewhere particularly quickly, but not... That's a bit of a rarity. So in, in aircraft Mach numbers, are got, we are coming right on profile here. That is perfect. There is the ground. We're going to be there in a few minutes. Um, kind of looking forward to the Kenyan leg, and the Ethiopian leg there around uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, but uh, we're kind of going through some of the, I don't want to say more boring countries, because that's not really true. Uh, we're going through a lot of the countries that not a lot of people care about at the moment. You know, once, once we get back into Europe through... Uh, Germany, which we haven't hit yet, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, that's when I think people will be interested again. And the interest will wane once we get down to the likes of Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan, China people might be interested in because it's a bit weird, everything's weird in China. Um, in terms of flying. Um, Japan, people will be watching out for Godzilla. Or Gojira. If I use the correct name for it. Uh, so... 
We're on profile to hit 4200. I can actually just extend the descent because it's 42 or above. I presume Hayden's loaded into Gucci. He has not yet, at least. FLSLC, US Night, Mark 0.72, level 60, 360 and 733. Should have gone to closer airfield, three feet from the stopping point from the gate. That was a bit, uh, that was pushing it a bit fuel range. Hey, Volt Drop! It's one thing that I'm hoping doesn't happen today. Could do this last leg in a Cessna. But I think that's going a bit extreme with the, uh, the slow boys. I think I think we'll stick with the the, the speedyish boy today. And we might do. See, today would have been a good day to do two legs in a piston engine. If I want to do the next leg in a piston, I think it would take a while. Let's have a look at the next leg. Uh, the next leg, I know uh, the next leg I could do in a piston, but the one after that have to be turbo props. So yeah, we're gonna stick with turbo props for now. Um, you might see the Epic 1000 come out again on Friday, because I am quite liking this plane. Approaching altitude. Thousand above, and then at decal. Thank you. At decal, we need to. Oh, we are perfectly on 4200 at decal. Um, at decal, we then need to slow down further. Well, slow down, drop further. Uh, 2400 by conal, and we've got five miles to do it. I think I should mark to it up with Aiden. See, the thing is, I got my flight plan planned out for uh, a turbo prop. I have to actually change the flight plan if I wanted to go faster or higher. It's all planned out for. Uh, just realized I need to change my barrel. Yeah, I thought as much. We're below 4200. Oh, we're at that call, so now it's down to 2400. IAS, 150 knots. Down we go! Welcome back, Nick. We are just about to hit our... Uh, Connell is... I am correct in saying that is the start of our actual descent here. Yes. Approaching waypoint. Approaching Connell. I hope we're at the right altitude. We're still a thousand above. Altitude. Let's get down a bit faster. Don't mind being a bit high or a bit down a bit before Connell. That's fine. And... We'll hit approach in a moment. It should give us a full RNAV approach in theory. In practice, it might not, but we're low enough that. Oh my god, that's beautiful. <laughs> that better not be the airport. No, that can't be the airport. The airport's gonna be. Oh, there's the airport! And there's Hayden! Twenty four hundred approach mode is in. Flaps one speed will set to one hundred knots. I'm hoping this works, because 
I don't know if this is capable of Ornav approaches. Because we should be descending to 1700 by CY503, which is not happening. I'm going to override here IAS and altitude of 1700. IAS 100 knots. Gear down. Let's get the gear down just for maximum. Oh, that's why it shouts at you. Okay, I've got the, the field in sight. I could, at this point, go visual, and I think I will. Autopilot disconnect. It's not. Thank you, Hayden. So yeah, visual's the only option here. So I'm going to come in, need a bit more down, where's the runway, I have the field in sight but not the runway, have the poppies in sight, they're always, at the, they're usually at the left. I'm in a very, very slow approach here because I'm going to need time to reorient myself with regards to everything. Hope you don't mind me doing a snail approach, Aiden. Fuel tank switched. Thank you, lady. Should get 1,000 feet warning very soon. It's looking like we're actually on profile for the run ah runway in sight. Uh, poppies are looks like for red. I'm just gonna do something that's gonna kill a couple of frames, but that's fine. Real lights, installer, come on. Okay, we are four red on the poppies. So let's just level off here, put a bit more throttle in. I swear real lights is the best thing that I ever bought. Even though it's just uh, an INA. It's just a config changer. Okay. Still four red. That looks like we might have one white. Approaching waypoint. Aiden, what is the final speed for this? Because I haven't actually done my research. I found that coming in at about 100 knots works fine. <laughs> We're still for red. Ninety. Oh. I've, I've unintentionally been reading this in perfectly then. Just a touch fast. Here we go, two white, two red. Start bringing it down. Not too fast. That was too fast. One more trim in. Hey, now I'm going to need to re-log, find a new plan, and then put it into GPS before I can take off again, just FYI. More trim.
Still coming in low. Oh my god, you are in a dash eight. I thought you were joking when you said you were going to log in a dash eight. There's a telephone pole at the end of the runway. You can fly stun planes, but they, in no matter what flight sim it is, they all have terrible physics. Also, Hayden, I'm guessing you have zero scenery for this because, according to this, you're like off in the middle of nowhere. So, oh, that's the high speed I wanted. Oh, I came in with no landing lights on. <laughs> that was dumb of me. You're using Prefab Africa. Ah! Let's just take this area here and the flaps up. Spin around here. I had like no speed whatsoever because this thing just will not stop. That's good. Right. They have good physics in the crew. They have good physics in nothing. <laughs> Nothing has physics that can actually cope with a, a stunt plane, trust me. Um, I'm just going to bring up BRB while I re-log to change my call sign. There we go. Right, flight plan is going to be... Uh... Gucci to Fox New Lima. GTFF some plane physics are also terrible. Literally no plane has good uh, my alternate is Gucci. Um, and oh god. Uh, cruising on to <laughs> 9,000 feet. <laughs> Keep tour speed 244, and our flight plan is the Biro 1 Sierra uh, to Biro. Direct to. Lingy, direct. Um. <laughs> it's fine. It's planned to take. Uh, we'll say 0 hours 45 minutes. It's going to be significantly shorter than that, I think, but we'll just send it as 45 minute flight. Ah. So, let's get this all sorted out here. Uh, delete flight pan, okay. Insert waypoint, the first waypoint is going to be... Can I type it in? No, I can't. Oh, maybe I can. Oh, hey, I can! Zero. Uh, insert waypoint. Oh, nuts. Gonna change my flight plan. Because it's not direct to Lungi, it's the Bravo 614 to Lungi. Uh, insert. Okay, send that one. Insert airway. 
Bravo 614 to Lungi. And then after Lungi, it is direct to. Gear up. Gear down. Fox Lima Lima. Uh, <laughs> that's our flight plan. Um, I forgot to actually insert waypoint. Please let me. T Please put this at the very start of the. No. Can I move you up? Uh. Okay, if I delete you. Move waypoint, okay. Insert waypoint, yes. And it's barrel. Go direct to this. There we go. And then it is okay. So I delete this waypoint. There we go. Uh, insert departure and it is going to be off two four. The variable one Sierra. Uh, after barrel, we need to insert the. Bravo 614 to Lungi. Remove the Lungi waypoint. There we go. Back to chat we go. Play CBH in Denmark. I'm not going to fly into Copenhagen today, Nick. We'll be flying into Copenhagen eventually, but not today. Today we're in Africa. Um. Yeah, we're good to get this... Bad boy started up again. Well, sure. Well, feel free to take off, Aiden, because I need. Check engine. Yes, shut up. I need the runway in order to. Um... Check. I, I can take off from this intersection. Uh, and our cruising altitude is going to be 9,000. We're just going to clear ourselves direct up there. Not 900! 9,000! I'll go up and hold short here at the... Uh, High speed intersection. Do you guys get to see some actual, like, airplane things? Because he's taking off right now. Should have enough runway remaining to uh, get up in the air in the meantime. Hayden, that looks awful slow for takeoff roll. Oh no, there he goes. Nose is up. And away he goes in a fly V-8. You go, model matching. So I'll just line up here. Forgot to change the heading. Heading is 238. There's Hayden up in the air. Flying the runway. 
Oh no, he's doing a turn. There he goes. I'll call that good. Let's uh, get our own takeoff roll on the go. This plane is ludicrous. Okay, that was threatening a stall big time. Gear up. For the IAS. IAS of one fifty. And go via nav. IAS. Disable. Disable approach mode. Nav. IAS. There we go. We'll hand fly this mad joke. And we're 150 knots. We don't need flaps anymore. We could do with a bit more trim up, please. Trim way up. Trim back. And autopilot. Comically, the one aircraft that should be showing up on TCAS isn't. Aiden, are you are you mode Charlie currently? Fuel tank switched. Could you verify mode Charlie? Oh crap on a cracker, I'm killing the engine. You weren't mode Charlie, were you? <laughs> So Hayden's right there, we can't see him, but he is there. Approaching altitude. Can change this to 1013 now. And Hayden should magically appear just ahead of us. Except he hasn't. Where is he? Saying he's... Oh, he's in the blind spot. He's right in the bloody blind spot. There he is. What altitude are you even going to, Hayden? <laughs> also, wow, those pollies. <laughs> One one thousand. I'm going to continue cruise at uh, 9,000 here. And by cruise, I mean I'm just going to see how fast this thing goes at 9,000 feet. Screw theoretical restrictions. I'm just blasting it. We're going ATC free speed. Because in theory I should be under 250 knots, but yeah, no. <laughs> it's much more fun to just blast the speed and watch as we overtake a dash 8. Got some nice vortices coming off our wingtips. Oh, 
Also, we've got Michelin tires on this. For anybody interested in what what tires this uh, this plane might have. I won't be passing you. As John Cena once said, are you sure about that? <laughs> are you 100% sure about that, Aiden? Because it, it sure looks like I'm passing you right now. Sure does look like I'm passing you. Because um, I'm, I'm currently going at 261 knots. Also slightly off course. And by slightly off course, the autopilot makes the world's biggest correction. Of course. We gotta do a flyby in this thing. That was very unimpressive. There's the Dash 8 struggling to keep up. <laughs> This thing could do 260. We're doing Mach 0.5 at 9,000 feet. I wonder if I can get it to go even faster. Look, changing the prop pitch makes me go even faster. <laughs> that doesn't look at all threatening. Also, Hayden, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I had reshade on for the longest time. I've turned it off and now the, the game runs even better. <laughs> Slightly concerned about a potential engine failure, but all, all my readings are green currently. Including airspeed, which is... Traffic. Traffic. To ring on. Hayden, are you descending on top of me? Man said traffic. Those wingtip vortices are something else. I'm very impressed. Hayden is descending on top of me. Also, I want to land first because I want to see the derpy Dash 8 landing. Because there is not a single Dash 8 landing in the world that does not look derpy. Yeah, Hayden's definitely descending. Because he's plus 8 now. Clear traffic. of conflict traffic. Clear of conflict traffic. What the hell are you doing, Ed? I'm getting wake turbulence now. Hayden, you're actually giving me wake turbulence somehow. Oh, weather change. It's now cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe it wasn't the wake turbulence, but actual turbulence. That said, this is a very impressive picture. Um, disable labels. Yeah, you're just about in front of me, but you are lawn darting it. And oh boy, that turbulence, wow. That is some quite impressive turbulence going on right now. Great flying. Hayden, br bring it in close formation. Let's get that let's get this close formation going. Oh, I think Hayden's having some FPS issues. <laughs> I am, I should say, having some uh, minor turbulence issues in that my airspeed is now too... Yeah, this is why Hayden looks like he's having issues. It's because I'm having issues and I need to slow the plane up a bit because it's now overspeeding and 500 feet above where it should be. <laughs> Hang on, where's Hayden gone? Has Hayden crashed out or is he just hidden in a cloud? Or is he actively... What is going on here? Enable labels. Oh, he's falling behind, so I guess so that I can watch the Derpy-8 landing. Because it is one of the derpiest landing planes in the world. Also, it's just occurred to me, Hayden, we need to land, and we're above the airport. Is there any approaches? ILS 3.0 will be lovely. Uh, 1.3, 1.8, so we're wrong with 2, 1.3, 1.2, uh, 2, no, 3, 2, 3, 0, aye, ILS runway 3.0 before fine, QNH 1.0.0.7. Um, insert arrival. ILS three zero none D one one five zero and are we going direct out there? I presume so. Delta 1150. Yeah. At 4000. IAS 150 knots to 4000, please. ASG. So I'm going out 15 miles from the airport to literally spin round and come back in. We're going to need this 109.9, so 109. 
mine. That is our nav one. Client. Why am I being told by... Why am I being told to climb? Oh, well, there's the airport. Oh, hey, there's more there than I'd anticipated. <laughs> it's wrong still, but there's at least an airport there. Uh, that's... I didn't even know this was an option. The big cultivator and server. Very nice, Nick. Um, I mean this in the nicest possible way. I don't really care about farm sim today. Uh, clear of conflict. Am I clear of conflict because I'm too low now, or because Hayden is dropping faster than me? This turbulence is really something else. Wow. Traffic. Traffic. This is some impressive turbulence going on right now. Clear of conflict. Traffic. Traffic. Clear of conflict. Uh, all two as well. Fuel tank switched. Thank you, invisible lady. The one on five point five, Longy Loke. Get flaps one out, just for a bit of extra drag, and hopefully something that'll stabilize the plane a bit. So we're still way higher than we should be. QNH given for the airport 1007. Yeah, we're still 2,000 feet above. And we do need an ILS in conditions like this. Now look one and nav two. Approaching waypoint. I'm gonna make a dive. I can come in full idle approach if I need to. What's the ILS? It is one oh nine nine. 1099 and it should be ISH. Dot 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 dot. So if I listen in to nav one here, it should start beeping at me. Yes. 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 Identified is correct. On the glide slope. Not on the localizer just yet. 
coming around to that. You can see everything's kind of bouncing around because we're in a bit of turbulence. We're still in the clouds, kind of. Uh, 199 for ILS, it'll be DA as well, I think. <coughs> Failing that, use 115 decimal 5 for DME. That is an on field um, VRDME, uh, about halfway down the runway. Weather here is questionable. I mean, there is some quite bad weather out to the uh, whoa, to the left there, to the the. I guess the the southwest. Clay, we're good on glide slope. We are coming into localizer now. We're fully established. A bit of power. Actually, gonna keep power the same. I'm gonna go flaps full at 3,000 above. Is this the last leg? Yep, this is gonna be the last landing of the day. A bit faster than I'd anticipated as the uh, entire route. I was anticipating it'd be about a three hour route. So it ended up being about uh, two hours. Just a bit longer than that. Two and a half hours. We are on a localizer, we are on... Okay, strobe's gone off now, because that's bloody annoying. Was that not the strobe? That was the beacon. Where's the strobe? That's the strobe. You can go off now. Of course we go through the clouds and I got the strobe off. Now this, this is a landing. How beautiful is all of this going on right here? We've got the runway in sight, we've got the sun setting. Almost directly off the runway, off the end of the runway. Nice bit of fog and haze going on. Gear down. Gear's coming down. Yeah, Hayden's landing a Dash 8. One of my personal favourite planes. Gears full down, locked, 3 green. Flaps going down to full, flaps full. Indication good. Start bringing it down to final approach speed nine zero knots. Hey Sim, get traffic so we can watch the Dash 8 land. Doesn't look like a Q400 though, Hayden. Is that a, a 200 you're flying? Or is it the old Q400? Uh, that just is model matched horrifically badly. Q400 is just bad model matching because it looks more like a 3 or 2. Pleasure's in Q400. Yeah, they're bringing out the. Uh, I told you this already, they're bringing out a new. Um, a new Q400, the Q4XP. Don't know if that's going to be x 10 compatible, but uh, that's something that I'll be looking into, for sure. What'll annoy traffic even more is the fact that I'm flying a turboprop. Never mind the fact that Hayden's flying a, a dash. Traff has a vendetta against anything that doesn't have a jet engine. <coughs> 
1,500 feet now. And because this is a funky, funky thing, I don't know where I'm going to be exiting the runway. Aiden, be prepared to go around if needs be, because I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to depart the runway. There's 90 knots. Let's hold that. Go through a thousand feet now. We have poppies here, or no? Approaching waypoint. Not sure if we got poppies. We do have poppies. Thousand feet, stabilized, missed approach altitude set. Autopilot disconnect. Your gear's down? My gear's been down since 3,000. Gear down, flaps full. Landing check complete. We're not gonna get a minimum's call, but we'll call minimum's a 400. 400 minimums, and we're gonna land. Can I come on FS90 after the stream? No. Today is not a day where I play farm sim at all. I don't tend to do much off, off camera, to be quite, quite honest. Two red, two green, we're good to go. Two red, two green, two red, two white. Coming a tad slow here. Looking like I'll be making second exit here. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Oh, that was a lot harder than I'd wanted. Reversers! Angriest noise I have ever heard. And we're clear the wrong way. <laughs> Golf Fox Lima Lima hangers. <laughs> Couldn't just have signed as a hangers, no? Here comes Hayden. Hey, Richard. Don't worry, guys, you won't miss the landing. I'll make sure of that. Oh, still tons of time.
Here comes the derpy landing, because Dash 8s just can't land normally. <laughs> oh, that is a Q400. Uh, are you going around, Hayden? <laughs> I'm going to take that as a go around because the gear came up. <laughs> what happened? Did you miss the runway or something? You were coming down perfectly on profile and then you just kind of stopped descending. Oh, ballooned big time. Yeah, the winds here are a bit odd. You might just want to slam it. If you want, for those of you watching the stream, uh, number one, why is it saying on Active Sky that we haven't actually made it to Kanakri? We clearly have. Because I've finished that flight already, and we've gone on to the next one, and I forgot to set the... Damn. There we go. Hooray, we've completed the flight. <laughs> GG, Dave. GG. I forgot to change flights, so it's been regarding us as being halfway... Yeah, I've screwed up. Here comes Hayden for attempt number two. Gear down. You might need to do a hard set, Hayden. Where's the touchdown zone? It looks like it there. Okay. Yeah. She listened to me good. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, my frame rates. There we go. <laughs> there may be a slight mismatch in scenery here. <laughs> there he goes, sharking his way. <laughs> the ramp. <laughs> oh, ex squawk box. You derpy, derpy thing. Uh, chicken Kiev's chips and beans. I'm gonna let it park up, and then that's gonna be it for the stream today. Back in Farmson tomorrow on Oakfield, probably, I guess. Um. Next leg of the, the World Tour will be on Friday. And we'll be flying to Liberia and then the Ivory Coast. So we're hitting some countries that some of you guys might not even know exist. And we'll set that as orange because we're there. There we go. So it's Hayden all pack yeah, that'll do Hayden, I guess. <laughs> He's somehow sunk further into the ground. <laughs> so for today that'll be it. Uh thanks for hopping on, Hayden. A bit of a shame there was no air traffic control or no other pilots, but oh well. Um 
I'll plan out Friday when the time comes. Uh, until then, stay safe and goodbye.